Welcome to the Black Business School, and uh, we are very, very happy to uh, to hang out today. I'm, I'm super excited. I decided to do this Q&A at the last minute. Um, you know, I, a lot of you were sending questions about uh, the Black Stock Market weekend, and, uh, and I thought, you know, let me just, it's a Saturday. Uh, Alicia and I are celebrating because we, we're about to finish a uh, five-day fast we have been doing, and I figured, hey, you know what, um, maybe uh, we can go ahead and um, just answer some questions because I'm sitting around on Saturday afternoon. I'm not doing a whole lot today. So uh, anyway, um, just so you know, uh, some of you are watching from outside the Zoom. Uh, I cannot answer all the questions everywhere. I invited some of you on the Black Financial Channel to leave questions that I would answer directly. So I'll answer those first. And then those of you who are inside the Zoom, I'm going to answer your questions first. And uh, I want to also just say that I may not be able to answer every question that's asked because, uh, you know, sometimes the questions get pretty deep and pretty long, but it's all good. I'm here to help you. I'm here to uh, respond to, you know, any thoughts you may have. And I also want to remind everybody that uh, this week, um, or today actually, is the last day that you can get 48% off of our Black Stock Market Weekend. We're doing Black Stock Market Weekend next week, which uh, will be an opportunity for you to learn, um, to learn uh, basically what I, what I put together was an 11-step process for choosing stocks for your portfolio. And uh, it was something that I created in a proprietary fashion just for students in the Black Business School. And uh, if you haven't really dug into the Black Business School to see what we have to offer, uh, I wanna encourage you to do that. Uh, we're very, very good at what we do. And the dream and the vision was always to create a black owned university, uh, particularly in the area of business. Um, I'm a believer, you guys know I was, I was a finance professor at Syracuse for many, many years. And one of the downsides of, of teaching at Syracuse University and the Ohio State University and stuff like that was I said, number one, they don't hire very many black professors and they don't promote them. Uh, that's a problem right there. Then number two, uh, what they were teaching was not relevant to my experience as a black person. Uh, I'd seen our people go through a lot of economic challenges that you know, they just weren't addressed. Uh, you know, I think black people need to own businesses. Black people need to uh, understand wealth building as part of their freedom process um, instead of learning how to go work for other people. I don't think that's beneficial to you long term. Uh, also, um, the price was too high. I felt that, you know, the, the, the problem is, here's the thing. A lot of the reason the black wealth is, is going backward is because you are uh, borrowing so much money to go to school or many of our people are borrowing so much money to go to school that, you can't really afford to live. You can't afford to get rid of the debt and go on with your life because the debt becomes so crippling for you. So, uh, you know, because paying $50,000 a year or whatever to go to school is kind of crazy, especially when you talk about attending a university that's pretty racist, doesn't really want you there, and uh, they're charging you insane amounts of money. So uh, that's what the Black Business School is all about. We're here to address a specific need. We're here to give you a uh, high quality, uh, high quality, low cost, uh, culturally relevant education on all things black and economic, all things black and, and whatever black people need, that's what we focus on. We're here focused solely on you. We have a great faculty. We brought in billionaires. We brought in people that uh, have made millions of dollars. We brought in real estate experts. We brought in all kinds of people that, uh, that are better than the professors you had in college. They're not as good, they're better. And the reason they're better is because um, I'm a college professor, I'm a PhD. I know uh, what professors know and what they don't know. And here's one of the secrets they don't tell you about places like Yale and Harvard and, and stuff like that. And even some of the HBCUs, no disrespect to them, but this is what it is. Most of your business school professors have never run a business. Uh, most of your business school professors don't know how to make money. Uh, the only way they know how to make money is to get a paycheck. And uh, we're trying to get away from uh, a little bit of the paycheck culture, not to the extent that you should be ashamed if you get a paycheck. There's, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, we're getting away from the paycheck culture because we need people in the community that are going to realize their full potential. You have a lot of people who in another reality would have become multi-billionaires, but instead of becoming billionaires by building their own and, and expanding and scaling, uh, they became thousandaires. You know, they, they end up working a job, maybe making, making good money, maybe 150000 a year, and they think that that's all that there is. Well, there are people out there that make $150,000 a day that run big, big companies and stuff like that. So I want to, I want to basically make sure you guys understand all the different possibilities in terms of um, what's really out there. And I want your kids to really understand that too, because uh, the core mission of the Black Business School is we believe that we must educate our own children, create our own jobs and support black business. 
right? Those are the three, that's what we call the black core of three. Those are our three core beliefs. So right now, COVID is a great opportunity because your kids are not in school. Well, you wanna educate your kids? We got something for you. We have free, free homeschool training sessions every Thursday at noon with Noma Langa Mushali Moses. So if you're looking for resources on how to homeschool your child or how to figure it out, just uh, go to uh, theblackhomeschoolnetwork.com. If somebody could type that in, please go to theblackhomeschoolnetwork.com and you can register. That's theblackhomeschoolnetwork.com. Please type that in if you haven't done it yet. And uh, it's totally free. It's every Thursday. We also have a black business school for children that you really should check out. It's very good. Um, our children that go through our programs and get a degree out of that program actually have a financial literacy level that exceeds the average college educated adult. So what we did was in the black business school, because I, I think that we're extraordinarily innovative, is we took advanced concepts right you know because as a finance PhD I, I understand this stuff pretty well and I chopped it up into baby food and I said okay let's chop this down to the point where a seven-year-old can understand it or a five-year-old can understand it and it worked you know we, we have thousands and thousands of kids that have gone through the programs and have done extremely well and their parents some of the kids are um, one mom told me her son she gave him she wanted to get him to go through the program. She gave him $1,500 as a reward uh, to go invest in the stock market. Somehow this kid turned that into $12,000 or something crazy like that. So his siblings, it was really funny. Money gets attention. Money makes people say, well, what, what are you doing over there? So his siblings that didn't want to learn, suddenly they put down their cell phones and were like, how does he have all the money? How, you know, because he's the, the middle child. He's, he's 12 and his sister was 16 and she, she wasn't into like wealth and all that. They, they're into Gucci and everything else, which is really funny to me that you're into material things that are very expensive, but you're not into making money. Like if you're into material stuff, then you should probably want to be great at making money so you can buy all the stuff that you want. But, um, but she wasn't into that. But when she saw that her brother could actually afford a Gucci purse, if that's what he wanted to buy, suddenly she started paying attention. Now I think all of her kids are learning, uh, learning about wealth. So uh, that's what I believe. I, I, I see a great future for our community. And uh, you guys have seen me pretty consistently talking about these, these issues. And I believe that that is the key uh, to freedom for black people, because most of you that feel stressed, strained, or controlled, it usually has something to do with money. Usually, you you know, you're maybe you're getting up every day, going to work at a job that you hate because um, because you need the money, right? And so, to some extent, that's a type of slavery. Like people think that to be a slave, you have to be poor or you have to be work for free, and that's not true. You can slavery is a lack of control. It's a lack of power. It's a lack of ability to make your own decision. So many of us become slaves by default. We're trained for slavery. We're prepared for slavery the same way a pig is prepared for slaughter. Uh, so anyway, uh, am I speaking at the FBA conference in September? Uh, Tariq uh, asked me to speak at the one in June. I assume that the invitation still stands. If it doesn't, uh, I'm going to reach out to Tariq. I didn't know he had rescheduled to September, so I'll just hit him up. I talked to him this week, so I'll see what's going on. I'd be happy to support. Uh, okay, so uh, what? how do I improve? Uh, what should I do when researching a company to potentially invest in? That's a great question. Um, uh, Yop TV 2 uh, I will just say this, that that's not a question I can answer in 30 seconds. Um, uh, you know, looking at the quality of the company matters, but that's not the only variable. There are other factors uh, in terms of what, you know, how the portfolio, how the, how the stock fits into your portfolio in terms of what they call correlation. So that's actually what we're going to talk about during the Black Stock Market Weekend, where I break down that whole 11 step process. I go through 11 steps to decide which stocks I want to add to my portfolio. So basically, I'm going to just break that down for you over the weekend and then answer all the questions you have. So anybody who wants to um, join the Black Stock Market Weekend, first off, if you're in the Black Stock Market Program, you get in for free. So everybody that's in the Black Stock Market Program gets in absolutely free. It's going to be the weekend of August 7th, and it's for this program. This, is, this event is for you. Now, those who want to come and are not in the Black Stock Market Program, this is not the mini class. The mini class is a tiny introduction to the, the Black Stock Market Program. So to get in, you have to be a member of the full Black Stock Market Program. Uh, and uh, But if you want to just come to the event and you don't want to join the program, you can actually get a 48% off. The cost of admission is $249. You can get 48% off for the next about, what, 10 hours or so until midnight. So up until midnight tonight, 
you can get 48% off that which drops your price from 249 to 129 and if you're interested you can go to the the black stock market weekend.com the black stock market weekend.com if you want to also try a different way you can actually get in for a dollar as well you can do a 30 day trial in the black stock market program and that URL is the black stock market program.com the that's the black stock market program.com if somebody could type that in so that I, so that you know everybody hears it and I don't have to keep repeating it I would appreciate that um, I'll type it in for you so the black stock market weekend.com or the black stock market program.com so you can do either one so you can either get the 48 percent discount or you can do the 30-day free trial it's totally up to you so let me uh, type that in there we go all right thank you thank you Melissa for typing in I appreciate that okay next questions um Let's see here, uh, Monty. Where do I in, where do we invest in, with regards to the dollar debasement? Uh, well, that that comes in uh, in terms of something I talked about yesterday, where I was explaining to you guys that the dollar is in big trouble. Um, there's what it, what they call the great debasement of the dollar, where the dollar is being um, ruined basically by these insane stimulus packages. And not to say that it's bad. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have a stimulus. I'm just saying that we can't go on forever. And so what's happened is that, you know, a lot of experts feel that the dollar is at risk because, um, you know, you're, you're spending money like there's no tomorrow. Uh, they are, um, you know, doing lowering interest rates and, and all kinds of other stuff that, you know, that, that's caused what they call asset inflation. And uh, so a lot of us, and, oh, and also you're slowing down economic growth. And the last piece is that government debt is out of control. So basically, if you want to visualize the debasement of the dollar. Imagine if you had a friend. Now, here, here's where your country was before COVID. Here's what your country looked like before COVID. You were already screwed before COVID. I just want to be clear. I hate to sound pessimistic, but it's true. Um, you were screwed before COVID. And let me explain what you are. You, we bring in about $3 trillion a year um, in government revenue. Well, the government national debt is about $24 trillion. So imagine a person who makes thirty grand a year who has $240,000 in student loans. Would you consider that person to be financially screwed? Give me a yes or no. Yes or no in the chat if you think that a person like that would be natu would, would be screwed financially. Yes or no? Okay, so, so they're already screwed, right? You're already screwed because you make 30 grand a year, you have 240,000 in student loan debt. Now, imagine also that the person says, oh, by the way, um, I maxed out all my credit cards. Right. So that's where the national debt is insane. So if they say, oh, you know, yeah, and I maxed out all my credit cards. So I don't even have any credit cards I can I can use. Right. So when we when we allow these insane deficits, we're kind of maxing out the credit card to some extent, the, the equivalent of that. And then imagine if that person says, oh, and by the way, I had a financial crisis and I, um, I, I depleted my savings. My car broke down, which is like the economy breaking down like COVID. So imagine them saying my car broke down. And I depleted my, in my entire savings, in my life savings, I spent fixing my car and buying groceries or whatever, you know, because I couldn't work for that time. I couldn't get to work, right? So now they have, they, their credit cards are maxed out and they have no savings. That, that's what your country looks like now. So, so you were screwed before, then you became doubly screwed when you maxed the credit card out. Then you became triply screwed when you emptied the bank account. But the screwing is not done yet. This is, a, this is one of those uh, long love sessions, right? You're going to be making love all night. So the, the, third, the, the, the last way you get screwed is, uh, so you're quadruply screwed, is imagine also if that person tells you, oh, and by the way, um, my, I just got a pay cut on my job. So that job that was paying me $30,000 a year is now going to just pay me $25,000 a year. So, so, so you started off screwed. You're a person making 30 grand a year with a quarter million dollars in debt. Then you became doubly screwed when you maxed out your credit card. And then you became triply screwed when you emptied your savings account. And then you became quadruply screwed when you found out that your pay was actually going to be cut. So your capacity to actually overcome the debt situation that you're in has been limited. That's what's happened to the United States. That's what's happened to your country with COVID. The debt is out of control. Um, the, the these uh, stimulus packages are, I mean, you know, I'm not here to say what we should and shouldn't do. I'm just going to say this: um, if you want to look at it from a balanced perspective, what the Republicans are doing wrong and what the Democrats are doing wrong, what the Republicans are doing wrong is they're letting rich people get away without paying taxes. 
you know, people like Jeff Bezos should not have $131 billion in, in net worth. You know, 50 billion is enough for anybody, right? So wealthy people don't pay taxes. They haven't been paying their fair, their fair share since Reagan was in office. Um, and then the area where the Democrats are screwing up, in my opinion, is they just want the stimulus packages to be insane. Like they want, they literally want to spend three, four, five trillion dollars if they could. I believe that they, I think that they're okay with printing money and just paying people to stay home forever. Like never go back to work. Just get the same, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll pay you what you made on your job and you never have to work again. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm saying that that doesn't work. The math does not add up. I'm a mathematician. Math does not add up. So that's what you're looking at with the debasement of the dollar. The ways people are protecting themselves are with investments in commodities, gold, silver. Uh, there are ETFs you can invest in. Uh, if you're in the Black Stock Market Program, there is a special segment you guys have access to, a special program that called What Dr. Boyce is Buying. And that's where I document a lot of my stock purchases in terms of how I'm protecting my own portfolio. So that's another incentive. If you want to try out the Black Stock Market Program for a dollar for the first 30 days, you can go to theblackstockmarketprogram.com, T-H-E, that's theblackstockmarketprogram.com. So uh, buying gold, silver, emerging markets, uh, ETFs, things like that. Those are some things people are doing to protect uh, their wealth. They're even buying Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. Um, so there you go. Uh, so let's see here. Um, now the Black Stock Market Weekend, which starts next week, I'll keep giving the URLs as we go along. Those in, those moderators in the chat, stuff like that, if you could keep you know putting it in there for people, I'd appreciate it. Uh, this weekend, it is um, the blackstockmarketweekend.com, theblackstockmarketweekend.com. For today only, you can get 48% off. So feel free to uh, to sign up to join us next week. That's where I'm going to show you how to pick stocks, or I'm going to show you what I use, what I do to uh, pick stocks. All right. So next uh, question. Let me see here. Let me dig in. And uh, I saw some questions here. Here we go. Uh, where uh, with the dollar depreciating? Where should we put our money? Okay. Same question. All right. I already answered that. Uh, question: If I own a house and want to monetize it, should I go the tra traditional route and rent? Or should I use a service like Airbnb? Um, I think that, you know, I, I, I think both of them are solid. I think renting obviously gives you the long-term contract, but Airbnb gives you more premium. I think it also depends on what the location of the home and uh, where you're trying to rent it out. Uh, a last little piece too is if, is if you need cash, you know, or liquidity, you can always borrow against an asset. Like this is another good benefit of owning stock and accumulating stock slowly but surely even if you're even if you're putting the same amount in your stock portfolio that you spend on fast food over you know, several years you like you'll accumulate a lot of money and what happens is that when you've got this money it becomes part of your security blanket it gives you financial security so you, because you can go to a bank and say look you know i want to borrow ten thousand dollars and they'll say well where's your collateral well you can say i've got thirty thousand in my stock portfolio i just don't want to sell my stocks Will you loan me ten thousand against my portfolio? And they'll say usually they'll say yes. So uh, that's another way to just keep yourself liquid. Um, let's see, list of books to read on stocks. Um, you know what? I don't think you actually have to go read a bunch of books. I mean, there are books out there like The Millionaire Next Door. A lot of people like Rich Dad Poor Dad stuff like that. But truth be told, I I would I think learning you know through an online class or something like that is good. Um, I don't really think you have to necessarily order books because a lot of the books that are out there, the information is old. I, I think in, in modernized information is better because the stock market is changing. The dynamics of how stocks are traded is evolving. You know, with uh, COVID, you had an, an, an emergence um, on Robin Hood of a lot of speculators. And what that's done is that that has disconnected fundamental stock values with market prices. Like people are overbidding for stocks and speculating like crazy, like Tesla and stuff like that. So I started to sell call options on Tesla stock because I said, there's so many people out here that just are gambling. So, you know, I said, you know what? I don't want to be a gambler, but shoot, I'll play the house all day. So basically, uh, and, and if you guys are in the options masterclass, you know what I'm talking about. So I started writing call options, you know, with, with different stocks. And it's been a great, um, a great, money maker in the portfolio so um and by the way those of you who want to join the options masterclass we talk about options every single week um wednesdays at eight you can go to a uh, dr boyce masterclass.com somebody type that in please dr boyce masterclass.com that's dr boyce masterclass.com all right um grand rising i would like to know when's the best time to sell your stocks in the market to capitalize on getting money from the stock you want to sell um there really is no best time uh you know some people choose to hold forever so Warren Buffett says you should, you should hold for 10 years. 
Um, some people want to sell quickly. Day traders want to sell fast. So there's really no steadfast rule. There really isn't. And there's no way to predict when the stock's going to go down. I don't care what anybody tells you. They tell you all day, like, oh, I can tell you when a stock's going to go up, when it's going to go down. And uh, I've done the research. You know, I've been around other scholars. And all they did was they studied day traders to see what they know and what, what they don't know. And I'm not here to disrespect day traders, but I'm here to say that the research does not support the idea that day traders are necessarily anything other than, than intelligent gamblers. Uh, and so when you look at gambling, people go to the casino, some people win, some people lose, right? And the winner is always going to tell you, I've got a surefire system to play blackjack. But, you know, that system, I mean, it could easily go bad. Let's say that. Let's see here. Uh, we all know the dollar is about to crash. Uh, so what gold mining stocks do you recommend? I don't buy into gold mines. I, I buy ETFs. Um, let's see, Angie, where should young, a young, wid young widow women start investing? Um, you just start from the beginning. Um, you know, if you like dividend paying stocks, you can do that. If you like growth stocks, you can do that. Um, in the Black Stock Market Program, we break all that down. Uh, but, you know, basically it's, uh, it's, you know, the best way to start investing is to start investing. So if you haven't started investing yet, uh, we actually have a free training you can try out to get started at firstshareofstock.com. That's firstshareofstock.com. So somebody type that in, firstshareofstock.com. Uh, Patty, what's your take on options trading or scalping for income streams? I think it's great. I think that um, that you know, selling call options and selling put options. That, that that's I, I love to do that. Um, TZ Frank, what are the advantages of stock options? Um, the advantages of stock options is that they allow you to manage your risk a little bit better. So with risk, you can pass it around like a football. So you can either take on more risk. So you can say, here, give me the ball. I want to run it down the field. Or you could be the quarterback and throw the ball to somebody else who wants to run, right? So basically with stock options, you know, with a, if you buy call options, for example, you're taking on risk. You're paying money because you expect that the stock is going to go up or, you know, whatever. Um, but with a put option, you're going in the other direction. You're a bear, right? Or, but, but remember, for every option, somebody that buys it must also sell it. There must be another person selling it too. So in order for that to happen, there are people on both sides of the transaction. So you can take both sides of the transaction. So when somebody says, I want more risk, I'll pay for that. Then I say, great, I'll sell you risk. I'll sell you the upside on this stock if you're willing to pay for it, right? So uh, effectively, that's kind of what the benefit of options are, is it allows you a way without the deployment of too much capital to manipulate and manage your risk and to participate in the upside of a stock or the downside or to protect yourself from the up or downside. Uh, Sandra, hello, Dr. Boyce. I'm new to invest and I'd like to know uh, what stock pick would be good for growth and value for the long term? Um, you know, there's a lot out there, uh, but companies I, that just people seem to love now are like Amazon. Everybody loves Amazon. Um, Microsoft was doing pretty well. Their earnings announcement came out. There was some mixed conversation there, but I still think they're a strong company. Apple is strong. But then what's going to happen is you're going to see the emergence of some cyclical stocks once we get out of the COVID situation. And by the way, everybody, I'm doing a Q&A. I'm only answering questions that are inside the Zoom. So if you're on Instagram, I love you, but I can't I, uh, I have to focus. I have ADHD and I'll be all over the place. So I'm going to answer the questions that are inside the Zoom, but you guys are welcome to watch. And also don't forget that next weekend we're doing the Black Stock Market Weekend. Uh, for today only, you can get 48% off. That's almost half, 48% off. Uh, and we're going to go through that weekend, a whole weekend. We're going to go through 11 steps to adding stocks to your portfolio, the 11 steps that I use. And uh, it's going to be really great. So if you'd like to learn more, go to blackstockmarketweekend.com. That's blackstockmarketweekend.com. Dot com. Uh, let's see here. Uh, K1017 says, should I be holding stock through the election? Um, I am. I'm going to. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I am. DeAndre, DeAnthony, uh, can hedge fund managers invest in SPACs? Uh, you know what? I got to look that up. I don't um, special. I don't know exactly what SPAC is. Um they seek underwriters and institutional investors before offering shares to the public. These, these money specs raised in an IPO placed an interest bearing savings account. Um, special purpose acquisition companies. Yeah. You know, that's a specialized investment. That's not easy to participate in now with IPOs in general. Don't, I don't get in the hype of IPOs. I'm not interested in the hype behind IPOs. A lot of people want to be involved in IPOs because the media makes a big deal of, you know, you know, they make a big deal of these IPOs. I don't, um, I've seen the research. The research says that IPOs are not special 
Um, they're not typically great investments. And, you know, people like them because they just seem, you know, like, like a big deal. But the reality is that it's the media that's hyping things up. The media tends to um, focus on the things they want you to focus on. And then what happens is the whole world focuses on that thing and it becomes a big thing. Um, I personally think you want to get information and look at the entire picture. At least that's what I do. Uh, because I just am a firm believer that the media is full of crap half the time. I don't like what I see in the media because I, I'm anti-stupidity and I see a lot of stupidity in the media and it bothers me. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Jake Wine, what is a good stock trading app? Um, you know, there's a lot out there. Um, Robinhood, Acorn Stash, E-Trade, Fidelity, uh, Cash App, you can buy stock on Cash App. Uh, Robinhood's okay. Robinhood and Stash are okay. The one big problem I saw with Robinhood and Stash is that it's really hard to move your money out. Like if you if you want to flip your stocks to a different app or a different account, they make it really hard for you to move your money. I don't like anybody that makes it hard for me to move my money. So I was really very mad at Stash and Robinhood for that reason. Um, let's see here. How do you feel about the Forex, Forex trading on the platform? Um, well, Nicole, you know, Forex trading's not bad. But Forex is not as easy to make money as stocks. For the last 30, 40, 50 years, stocks have been a really easy way to make money. There's a methodology I could show you in 10 minutes that would easily, you know, get you over the hump. You know, like, like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, you can't control how you were born, but it's very easy to control how you die. You know, um, if you, you know, it's, it, you can't control whether you, you're born poor, but it's very easy to be, to die with money. You just have to understand money and you have to understand the pitfalls, the ups and the downs, the opportunities that exist around you. So for example, if I, if you give me somebody who is, who's uh, broke or poor, whatever the case may be, um, and I get to educate them, you know, let's say the way we educate our kids in the Black Millionaires of Tomorrow program, and I teach them about the pillars of wealth and the, the pitfalls to avoid like too much student loan debt that person is definitely going to have an easy shot at becoming wealthy. It's not that hard to do. Um, the biggest barrier you have is psychological. My expertise, my, I wrote my dissertation on investor psychology. So I'm fascinated with how the differences between how people think determines the, different, determines the differences in their outcomes. And even the fact that people don't like that statement tells you something about mentality. If you're a person who believes that your mindset plays no role in your outcomes, then that tells me right there that your mindset is playing a role in your outcomes, right? You don't believe that what I'm saying is true because what I'm saying in your world is not true, right? Because you're not even gonna try to believe that you can actually do it because you don't believe you can actually do it, if that makes any sense, right? We only try to do things that we believe are actually possible. So. A lot of what you get in media um, is not consistent with the financial science. Uh, financial science says basic things that wealth accumulation is a matter of, of allowing money to accumulate, um, minimizing the amount of money that comes, that comes out of your accumulation pile and accelerating the growth of accumulation. If you can do those things, then you will be rich. That means that if you save instead of spend, then you're going to be better off. It means that when you spend, if you try to minimize that as much as possible, then good for you, you win. But most importantly, here's the big part. This is the big part. This is the part that matters most. If you accelerate the method by which you accumulate wealth, then you win, right? Rich people accumulate money faster than everyone else. And that's why rich people get richer, right? Now, now you might say, well, it's because, you know, again, they want to, they, you know, we, we live in an excuse society. We don't live in a, a society of accountability. Thank God my parents didn't raise me that way. Um, but here's what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, rich people get inheritances. That's why they have money. Yeah, a lot of them do, right? And, and some of them blow their inheritance because they, they do stupid things. And some of them grow their inheritance like a Donald Trump. Okay, let's take those people out of the pile, throw them to the side. And let's focus on those rich people who didn't get, who weren't born rich. Let's focus on the rich people, you know, the people who were born like I was. I was born in the projects. Uh, I've shown you guys a video of the projects I was born. It's called LaSalle Place in Louisville, Kentucky. You know, it, it, even in that situation, a person who does those things I mentioned, like letting your money accumulate, saving uh, instead of spending, finding ways to minimize the money that goes out of your pocket. That means being conscious about your spending on material items, not overspending on that stuff. Uh, being conscious about things like student loan debt, which is a poverty trap. Student loans are a poverty trap. Um, 
and, and then accelerating, most importantly, accelerating the methods by which you're making money, that person is going to win. In fact, that person will have more wealth at death than 90% of all people who were born wealthy. Be, you know, so, so those acceleration methods are really important. Black people, again, putting aside what's happened in the past, right? We know about Black Wall Street and everything else. Black people don't tend to teach as a culture wealth acceleration methods. We teach you how to go to work for somebody and to get a paycheck. That's what a lot of our families teach. That is the worst way. That's like me teaching you how to win the Indy 500 on a, on a, on a moped, right? You're not going to win the Indy 500 on a moped. If I want you to win, have a chance to win the Indy 500, I got to get you a car and I got to get you a good car and I got to teach you how to drive that damn thing, right? And so some of us, and think about this, a person who's only been trained to ride a moped, even if you give them the best car available, they're going to crash it. They're going to crash the damn thing, right? So basically uh, what occurs is that either people don't know wealth acceleration methods, so they, they, they go to work every day and they work hard and then nothing good happens because of, 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 the, of the debt traps that I talked about earlier, the poverty traps, or they luck out, right? They luck out and they get a big pile of money. Maybe they win, a, win maybe the lottery ticket comes in, maybe they get to the NBA or the NFL, or maybe they get a, an acting contract and get to go to Hollywood or something like that. They come into a lot of money, they, which means that they're getting, they're given access to a fast car. And guess what? They crash the damn thing because they don't know, they, nobody ever even taught them how to drive. So what you got to do for your children to make sure that they don't fall into any of this nonsense is you need to teach them wealth acceleration methods. It's very easy. There are three categories in, that, in which rich people make their money. One, owning shares of stock. The stock market has grown at an insane rate. Um, wealthy people are far more likely than non-wealthy people to invest in the stock market. Even poor people who invest consistently become rich people eventually. Number two, real estate. Uh, a landlord is almost always going to do better than a renter. A renter is, in, in fact, a renter is actually making a landlord wealthy. A renter is paying the landlord's mortgage. Um, three, ownership of businesses, entrepreneurship. People who own businesses tend to do better than people who don't. Uh, if money comes in, the boss is going to eat first and then the employees eat last, right? So effectively, at the end of the day, um, teaching your children these wealth acceleration methods uh, and then also helping them to avoid the debt and poverty traps, that right there will ensure that they'll have financial security, if not wealth. Some of your kids will actually become multi, multi, multi millionaires because they'll do, maybe they'll do something like, um, I talked to a black woman the other day who was making $50,000 a year. Uh, but she started a hair care brand and learned the process of white labeling a hair care brand. And now she makes a hundred thousand dollars a month, a month. Right. So, uh, so, it, and she's not special. She didn't go to Harvard. She didn't get a silver spoon in her mouth. She just understood that black women spend a ton of money on hair and that we need to get in that industry. And she figured out how to position herself, herself where she could get a piece of that pie, teach your kids the right way. Don't teach them the silly stuff. Okay. Um, anyway, um, so by the way, in the Black Stock Market Weekend, some of you are asking about the URL again. Uh, if you want to get the 48% discount on the Black Stock Market Weekend, which is the weekend of August 6th, go to blackstockmarketweekend.com. That's blackstockmarketweekend.com. And you can uh, sign up 24 hours. It ends at midnight where you can get 48% off. Uh, let's see here. Um, Cornelius, how do you feel about fractional shares? Um, I think fractional shares are great. Um, they give you the same type of ownership that you'd have if you bought entire shares. Uh, NW, question, what are the long-term benefits of buying black? Uh, well, when you buy black, you keep money in the black community, which naturally builds wealth in the black community. So um, what happens is that money actually multiplies when you are buying in your own community. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm gonna explain to you how, when you're buying black, how $1 becomes $5. So let's say that I don't buy black. So I have $1 and I spend $1 at Walmart. Well, the Walmart family takes that money and they export it out of my community. That dollar is gone forever. But let's say that I buy black and I'm committed to buying black, but I'm also committed to buying black from people who buy black, right? So I don't just support black businesses. I support black businesses that hire black employees and, and put the money back into the black community, have black suppliers where they're putting the money right back into the black community. So I go give, you know, Joe my dollar at the, at the deli well, Joe, because he buys black too, takes my dollar and he goes down to Tiffany's place to get a haircut. And so Tiffany gets the dollar and then Tiffany takes that dollar and goes to, um, to Mary's uh, cupcake shop, right? So, so basically uh, between Joe and 
Billy or whatever the second name was, Tiffany and Mary, that $1 has been used four times, right? And then, and then if, if, if the last person uses it black again, then that's five times. So that $1 has become $5 in that one example, right? So when, when a dollar circulates, it can get used over and over and over and over again. Uh, whereas if you don't use the, let the dollar circulate, then you only get that dollar once. So in a way, think of it like um, dishes in your cabinet. Imagine if every time I used a dish, I threw it on the ground and broke it into pieces and threw it away and then had to go buy another one, right? That would be silly, right? If every time I used a dish, I threw it in the garbage, or every time I wore a pair of socks, I threw them away. Every time I put on an outfit, I threw it away and had to buy another outfit. Well, that's going to drain me financially, right? That's not a sustainable model. That's not recursive. That's not uh, long. That's not beneficial long term to the economic security of my household because I constantly have to keep going out to get new dishes. I have to constantly spend money to buy new clothes because every time I use it once, I'm throwing it away. Instead, what do you do? You use, you buy an outfit, you might wear it three, four, 500 times, right? Over the course of five, 10 years, right? A pair of shoes, you wear them over and over and over again. Well, your dollars should be like those shoes. Your dollars should be just like, um, just like those dishes, right? Your dollars should be like the things that you use repeatedly not the things you use just once, okay? So don't use your dollars once for the same reasons that you don't use a dish one time. Uh, now I see Jay, okay, you know, Jay, I see you keep saying Jay Morrison is a scammer and uh, and I, I, I like Jay, I'm gonna say this, I, I think Jay Morrison and the Tulsa Fund, how about this, I'm not gonna hear, I don't know, you know, I don't know how other people do business, but what I will say to you is that um, because there are people online who went out of their way to say negative things about the Tulsa Fund. If you don't know about the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, it's where Jay Morrison raised well over $10 million within the black community by pulling together black investors. Um, uh, if you think, that, so, so here's the deal. So there are people online who were determined to say, this is a scam, this is a fraud. Now, I'm not gonna say that that can't be true. I'm not gonna say that there aren't people uh, who do unethical things. What I will say though, is that if you make an accusation that is that heavy, that's gonna cause that much distrust, that's gonna create that many problems in the life of a black entrepreneur, you better have proof, right? I'm saying, you know, what is your evidence? What is your proof? If you just think a black man is a scammer because he did something that you can't do, well, then that pretty much makes you as racist as any Klansman who's ever lived. That makes you as destructive as any uh, white supremacists out there because what you what you're trying to do is you're trying to do you're trying to exploit black trauma by creating distrust and when there's distrust then you're killing the black economy because we don't spend money with people that we don't trust so what I would say is that anybody who hears anything about someone you know research that information because I will say this here's what I'm going to say on behalf of Jay Morrison and this is why we have no problem doing business with him in the black business school is Jay was investigated because so many people online felt that a black man trying to do something at that magnitude, it must be a scam. Um, they, you know, the, the Securities and Exchange Commission investigated Jay. They, they went in and they had him go through, they went through 50,000 emails. They, uh, they went through all kinds of stuff. The FBI did a very careful probe and they came back with no evidence of wrongdoing whatsoever. So what I encourage you to do is when you hear somebody say that, you know, if you want to know the difference between a truth teller and a hater, um, just, you know, mention that fact because he did go through the fire. And, and I actually don't, I'm actually a little bit unhappy about that because, you know, you, you can't, it's hard to make progress when people are constantly trying to tug at your ankles and pull you down and burn down your building. You know, Black Wall Street, um, I'm not worried about so much of just about Black Wall Street being burned down by white people. We know what white people have done. I'm worried about Black Wall Street being burned down by black people by malicious, vicious, jealous, angry people who don't believe that a black person can ever do anything positive in their life. And I, and I just think that that's wrong. Um, and I think it, it's unfair because it creates, um, I wrote a book years ago in 2004 called What If George Bush Were a Black Man? And the reason I wrote What If George Bush Were a Black Man is because I noticed a long time ago, back when I f was finishing my PhD, how as a black man, you're just, you're just literally born on thin ice. You know, as a black man, you, you're heavily scrutinized by everybody. You're scrutinized heavily by black women, by white people, by the justice system, by your employer, to the point where even if you make them the same mistake that somebody else makes, you do the same thing somebody else did, they're gonna, you, your, your penalty is gonna be 10 times greater than anybody else. 
you know, like the the way like you you're done. You go to jail one time. They they just act like your whole life should be over because you made a mistake when you were 18 years old. And and I just really think that as black people, I think we have to be conscious of this, and uh, and 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 and, it, and and we can be conscious of this while also accepting the fact that there are some people in the community who are not going to do things right. Right. So you can't run around and say, oh, you should just trust anybody because they're black. But you got to at least give them a fair shot and also give them uh, a little bit of a right to make a mistake. You know, you run across a black business and they 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 screw something up. They mess up your order. Well, don't just say, well, I'm never supporting black businesses again. You know, think about this. I've never heard a person say I'll never go to a white business again because they messed up my food. Maybe you won't go to that business again, but you, you you'll never abandon white businesses. So why would you abandon the black one so quickly? That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I didn't mean to get on that soapbox, but I just had to lay that out there. Um, and uh, just, that's just, that's my truth. That's what I believe. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, let's see here. Question, should black folks use their money to go to college or invest in real estate stocks if we had to choose? Um, okay, that's a good point you make if you have to choose. That's what the defining factor is. I don't believe you should have to choose. Um, I'm a college professor. Alicia is a college professor. Our kids are gonna go to college because Alicia wants them to go to college. and I'm like, you know, like, okay, yeah, college is an option, right? Alicia's like, no, our kid's gonna go to college. So, okay, you know, you get, you listen to smart black women in your life, right? So uh, our kids are gonna go to college. Now, here's the thing though, when they go to college, they're not gonna go to college without understanding the principles on making money because making money is gonna be one of the most important things that they have to do in their life. You know, that's gonna be one of the most important things, factors that connects to their ability to be free and happy. So they're all going to go to college with exposure to um, stock investment. They all own stock and they're going to own more of it by that time. Um, they're going to go to college with exposure to real estate. We own real estate. We talk to them about ownership of real estate, how that's better than renting. Um, they're also going to go to college knowing how to start a business because there might come a day where they don't want to work for anybody else anymore and they want to look for other options. So I'm not saying that you should have to choose. I think you could do both. Um, if you ask me which one I think is more essential, I'm gonna leave that up to you, but I'm gonna say that in my world, the reason I went to college was because I wanted to make more money. Well, if real estate ownership and business ownership could help me make more money, you know, then why not, why isn't that as good for me as going to school? Because, because you know, studying business is like, is, it, it is going to college. I mean, I went to college to study business, right? Um, the difference was that in college, I wasn't taught to run a business. And I think that's what black people need. And that's why I wish, I wish a lot of HBCUs would start teaching things like power, poweronomics and stuff like that, because you can't just train millions of black people to go work for white people. Um, that's just training them, preparing them for a higher form of slavery. You, you can't do that. All right. So by the way, so the, uh, the stop, the black stock market weekend is next week. We're going to go through an 11 step. We're going to spend the whole weekend going through an 11 step methodology for choosing stocks to add to your portfolio. Uh, the cost for the weekend is 249, but for the next 24 hours until midnight tonight, you can actually get 48% off, which drops the price to 129. So if you're interested in joining us for the black stock market weekend, you can go to blackstockmarketweekend.com. That's blackstockmarketweekend.com. Some of you were asking, um, if you're in the Black Stock Market program, can you get in for free? Yes, if you're in the Black Stock Market program, but that is not the same as the mini class. The mini class <clears throat> is a, a short, tiny introduction to the broader program. The, pro the program is like this. The mini class is kind of giving you a taste of how great we are in the Black Business School in hopes that maybe you'll consider doing more. Um, and so the mini class does not give you the free admission. Uh, being in the program gives you free admission. So if you'd like to check out the Black Stock Market Program for 30 days for $1, you can go to theblackstockmarketprogram.com, T-H-E, that's theblackstockmarketprogram.com. Somebody please type it in uh, so others can see it. It's theblackstockmarketprogram.com. All right, so next question. Um, what are your thoughts on, in, on the investment record of The Motley Fool? Um, I, think, I think it's good. I like Motley Fool. I think it's a good publication. Jamar, what do you think about renewable energy the next five years? I think that's the future. Renewable energy. I mean, energy sources are going to have to shift. I think that uh, I think eventually we're going to run into a wall and we're going to have to make adjustments. So I, I like that for long-term investment. Um, I really need a 10-year financial plan. Invest in S&P ETFs. Yeah, I mean, if that's a way you want to do it where you can do a plug and play, set it and forget it type situation, yeah, that would probably work. Uh, you don't have to really think a lot to uh, manage your portfolio. You can actually, you know, in fact, that's actually something I'm going to show you guys on the Black Stock Market Weekend is how to basically manage your portfolio with 20 minutes a year. 
like literally where it would take you 20 minutes a year for you to just make sure your stuff is good and then set it and forget it. Um, it's very easy to do. I, I look forward to talking to you guys about that next week. All right, so let me see here. Um, okay, so many questions. Elijah, lost some money in stock. I did not sell or write options. Would it be smart to sell right now or ride out? Um, I can't predict what the market's going to do, um, but I do know the market has a lot of ups and downs. And, uh, and so if you sell, what are you going to do with the money? If you don't have another investment that's better than what, you're, what you think you can earn from stocks, then why would you deplete your capital, right? You're not going to just take the money and spend it, are you? Because spending spending guarantees you a negative 100% return. You do know that, right? You do know that when you spend money that and you buy something, you buy a pair of Jordans, the Jordan, I, I know the CEO of the Jordan brand, they ain't giving that money back. <laughs> They're not giving them. So, so you know, the, just the idea that people compare spending to investing or, or think that they're somehow equivalent or that I'm going to stop investing or sell my stock so I can go spend, those are not in the same thing. That's comparing that's comparing apples and uh, that's comparing apples and candy bars, you know, like, like they're just not the same thing. Okay. So keep that in mind. Latasha, the, is the options masterclass included in the free interest in the black stock market weekend? No, that's a separate program. Uh, the options masterclass is at drboysmasterclass.com. That's how you can log in. Um, I know you said the stock market class is included. Just wanted clarity. Yeah. The black, the, this, this weekend is something specifically for the students that are in the black stock market program. This is for you guys. Um, anybody else who's in other programs can join. Uh, and you can either join by doing a $1 trial in the black stock market program, or you can, uh, do, use the discount and go to blackstockmarketweekend.com and you can join that way. If you just want to join, if you want to come to the weekend event and don't want to sign up for a program, it's totally up to you. Uh, let's see, Stacy, Dr. Boyce, I'm a first time investor. What are some good gold, silver ETFs to buy? Um, the ETF for gold is GLD. Silver, uh, there's like a silver trust from iShares. If you just go to Robinhood and type in silver, you should be able to find it. Um, let's see, Shelly, do you know why they are running out of coins? I don't know. I imagine it has something to do with COVID and coins being pulled out of circulation. Um, I, I hear they're trying to get rid of coins or get rid of pennies. Uh, what are some LLC tips that I should know? Um, well, we're not talking so much today about LLCs, but at the very least, um, if you're going to start an LLC, I would definitely research that first, maybe take a class on it. Just don't jump in and don't definitely don't partner with someone in business unless you're hundred percent sure what you're going to get. That can go really bad, really fast. Jandell, what do you think about the black owned stock exchange, the dream exchange? Yeah, I'm looking up, I'm looking, looking into that. And I looked up Joe Chicala, Chicala, C-E-C-A-L-A. That didn't sound like a black person's name and he's not black. He's a, I think he's a white guy. What I saw, what I saw, he looked like he's not black, but that doesn't mean it's not black. I know they're partnering with Cadiz Capital Holding LLC and that is a private equity firm run by a black man, a man who looked black to me. And I saw an interview with him and he kept mentioning, you know, being a minority owned firm and stuff like that. And uh, I don't use the word minority. I don't like that word, but, but it's okay. He's a little older. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, it, it, he seemed pretty smart, you know, and, and really, you know, I don't necessarily, I don't want to over scrutinize this particular project more than I would scrutinize anything else that's happening in society. But, you know, at worst, you know, you do have scenarios where a white company will say, okay, we need a black person or black company to be the figurehead of our money making venture. But at the same time, really, I encourage you to just consider whether you can make money from it. Because I don't really care about them. I care more about you. And so, um, because at some point, you know, like we, we talk about integration and whether or not integration was good for black people or not. Um, but integration is good if it's done under, under the right conditions. Integration, in fact, is necessary in a global economic system. So, you know, the, the, the difference is, though, that you don't want to just integrate in the basement. You don't just want to be an employee, right, all the time, right? So, so think of integration like, living in the same neighborhood you know we can live in the same neighborhood with white people but we don't want to always live in your basement right we we, we maybe we want to live in the master bedroom sometimes too or maybe we want to have a house that's next to your house and then we can trade milk and cookies or whatever or share resources or help each other babysit but i but there has to be equity right and that's the problem with integration in america it's not that integration as a concept is bad it's that there was no equity and so in a way you can think of it like dating or like a relationship you know, if you ask somebody, is it good or bad to have a relationship? Is it good or bad to get married? Well, it depends. I mean, people who are who've been divorced or people who were, were abused, they feel like marriage is bad. 
but people that are in happy relationships might feel like marriage is good. So the idea of integration as a marriage is a matter of it being done under the right terms where you feel happy. So you should think about that, not just in, in terms of the broad spectrum of black integration with white uh, society, but also in your own life. When you're merging in terms of business and working with people, um, you wanna make sure that you're getting what you would like to get. So, uh, so th this stock exchange, I looked into it. I didn't see anything that raised too many red flags. Um, I did that Joe Sakala guy doesn't look black to me, um, but that doesn't make it a bad deal. I would really hope that, you know, that that capital goes toward developing the black community. I would hope that a lot of black entrepreneurs are at the front of the line in terms of who gets the capital. I would hope that the terms of the deals are good and not overly exploitative or anything like that. Because that's the other thing, sometimes working with angel investors and venture capitalists, you can get so desperate for the money that you put yourself itself in stupid, crazy situations where they're taking over your whole business and telling you what to do when you feel like a slave again. So you got to really look into that and really do your research when you take money. Don't just take money from anybody and don't just cheer just because a black entrepreneur got some money who cares like that may be you know the biggest slave deal ever remember in the record in the music industry they give all kinds of money to artists but as you know as megan the stallion and other artists have shown you some of these deals are absolute garbage so don't care just because somebody wants to make, uh, make love to you you got to make sure that it's love and not sexual assault Right, so that's what it is. Uh, it's Charlie a good stock to buy. Um, I, I, I don't, I can't really say one way or the other. It's a good company. It's a solid company. Uh, Mary O'Neill, uh, I'm new at investing. Need to know what's the difference between buying stocks and being a trader. Um, well, traders buy stocks, right? Uh, and I guess if you're buying stocks, that doesn't necessarily make you a day trader. Like a day trader is high frequency. Um, but you are a trader, right? You did trade and you bought those stocks and you have those stocks. You may just decide to hold them and own them. So I think that there can be a distinction made, in my opinion, between um, a day trader and an investor. Um, an investor is like a person that plants flowers and plants seeds and lets the seeds grow. Um, a day trader is somebody who's constantly swapping, constantly flipping, constantly moving. They're more like a hustler or, or somebody in the trap, you know, moving, selling dope and flipping money, you know. And, and I'm not saying that's bad. Sometimes you can make money in the trap and sometimes you can make money in quick flips. I mean, I'm not judging that, but I will say when it comes to stocks, uh, day trading comes with certain stressors that you want to be aware of. You have to watch your stocks, you know, kind of all day or, or every day, most of the time. You can set, you can set things that, that don't require you to completely do that, right? You can do certain types of trades that keep you from having to do that, but you have to kind of monitor what's going on and it can come with a lot of ups and downs and a lot of stress. So if you're not prepared to lose a lot of money very quickly, um, then day trading may not be the thing for you. So it's no disrespect to the day traders that are in the building. Uh, I love you too. So please, you know, if I say something that offends you, just chalk it up to me not understanding your your worldview. Okay, I respect that. Uh, Rise, when I enroll in the blackstockmarketprogram.com for a dollar, can I switch to the lifetime program? Sure, absolutely. Uh, if you want to, you can. Now, remember, if you do the $1 trial, you automatically get billed $89 a month the next month for as long as you want to be in the program. It's a great program. It's better than college, but it's far, far cheaper. That's the only difference. It's like probably one one thousandth of the cost total. But it's, um, you know, but the, it, it has a lot of content. And it's really, really good. And, you know, and I designed it so that you would learn everything you need to know in a very unique way. I personally think that we have a great teaching style and we explain things in a way that's better than, definitely better than universities, but also better than, you know, what a financial expert might say. A lot of financial experts, PhDs are not just financial experts. We, we teach financial experts. We train financial experts. So a lot of times what they might've read in a book and end up reciting from a book well, we're the people who write the books. So what that means is that we're able to do things that I think make us special, they give us a superpower, which is, hey, we have the ability to uniquely identify the unique challenges and struggles of, of being black in America and, and around the world and look at your specific needs and help you shape specific outcomes and ideologies that are consistent with what you want to accomplish, right? So for example, a lot of people in our community may not want to invest and have money just so they can go buy a Lamborghini and have a big house. Some people want to take care of their relatives. Some people want to just be financially secure. Some people just want to quit their job. Some people want to buy the block. So we kind of account for all of that and we study 
the black experience very closely to make sure that we're serving our all needs necessary. The other good thing too, is that every program in the black business school has a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee. You're not going to get that from a university, right? So that means that if you're not happy for any reason in the first 30 days, just email support at the black business school.com and that everybody write this email down because this is an important email. If you need it support at the black business school.com. We have a great support team that's available to talk to you anytime. Also, if you go to the black business school.com, you can go to the website and there are actually specialists that are waiting on the line to talk to you and they can help you with your special, your, your specific plans and, you know, find things that'll fit your goals. Okay. So we're really, we're really doing this thing. We're really doing it. We're doing it well. We have 107,000 students now, which makes us the biggest HBCU in America, if you ask me, and uh, we're going to keep growing and we're pretty powerful. We're, we're just kicking butt because we're good at what we do. Uh, Timothy, if you have a problem overspending, like you go to a restaurant and you think about getting a drink, but end up getting the whole meal, <laughs> sometimes the intentions are good, but then an issue with staying committed financially. Yeah, so you might need an accountability partner. Um, that's where things like, uh, I've actually talked to you guys on the Black Financial Channel about things like SUSUs. SUSUs are good because SUSUs provide accountability. SUSUs are group savings plans where everybody has to put a certain amount of money in regularly, and there's peer pressure that forces you to do things that you could probably do on your own, but you need accountability. And accountability is important because accountability allows you to, uh, to achieve what I call the holy grail of greatness. The holy grail of greatness is when you can get to a point where your words match your actions. Like imagine if suddenly tomorrow you had a superpower where everything you plan to do was gonna actually happen. You were actually gonna follow through on everything you ever wanted to do. Has anybody ever done that where you, maybe you start the year and you're all pumped up and you swear you're gonna lose weight? But then by like, you know, July, you're like fatter than you were at the start of the year. I don't know about you. I'm raising my both hands because that's me every year, right? Um, and, you know, or maybe you plan on starting that business and you plan on working 10 hours a week on your business and then you don't. And next thing you know, it's two years later. You haven't done hardly anything. You know, we all go through that. We all go through that. And I, and I thought about this. I think deeply about goal setting and, and achievement because I am absolutely obsessed with time management and I'm obsessed with getting the most out of life while we're here. Life is very short and I don't want to waste it. So one of the things I found out, I figured out in my own meditation on this was that the number one factor that separates great people from wannabes, you know, great for that 1% from everybody else is the ability to manifest what you would like to accomplish by meaning basically having actions that are consistent with your words, making a plan, and, and, and working the plan, like staying with the plan. That's hard to do. A lot of us have a hard time doing that. So one key to doing that is accountability, right? Like that's why I like susus, because susus make you save, right? You know, like you say you're gonna save, but now you're in a susu, now you gotta save, right? Um, right now I'm on the fifth day, this is personal, but I'm on the fifth day of a fast. Alicia always asked me if I wanna do a fast and I'd be like, no, 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 I'm a, I'll be fine. I'm gonna lose weight on my own. I never do. Cause I just, I like the Twizzlers too much. And you know, you put some chicken in front of me and, or a pizza or whatever. Like I'm just eating all the, all the crap. Right. So uh, finally I did a fast and she makes me go through the fast. Like she was making me get up and, 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 and eat crap. I didn't want to eat, you know, every day or, or, and stop me from eating the things I didn't want to eat. I had that accountability. So, so what she did and the, the reason I didn't resist was because even though as mad as I was at her when she would snatch the candy bar out of my hand or whatever, it was like, I let her do that because I knew she was only forcing me to become the man that I promised the universe I would become. Right. And I knew that there's a wall, there's a wall there. There's a, there's a wall. And I, and I don't want to sound too spiritual here on this, but I believe a lot of this is very spiritual, but there's a wall between who you are and who you want to be. And it's hard to go through that wall by yourself. Right. Sometimes you need somebody to push you through that damn thing. You know, and, and so she pushed me through it. And now we're on the fifth day. And guess what? I feel so much better. I have lost five pounds this week. And I'm so proud of myself for sticking it out, you know. Um, but I don't know if I could have done it by myself, you know. So everybody has that same problem. So find your process. What is your process to overcome your deficiency? Because time is, you know, tick, tick, talking. Like you're going to be dead one day. And you don't want to be old sitting up in a hospice somewhere looking back on all the things you wish you had done and then know that you can't do it anymore because you're old and about to die. Like don't let that happen to you, okay? All right. So, Claude, um, with the U.S. dollar depreciating, where can we put our money? Okay, we talked about that a little bit earlier with gold and silver and uh, emerging market ETFs, things like that. Michelle, uh, Mitchell, Dr. Watkins, thank you for the Black Business School. I'm a recent graduate of the Intro to the Stock Market mini course, and it was amazing. 
Yes, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Anybody who's watching who hasn't tried the mini class, uh, you can actually take a look if you'd like. If you go to firstshareofstock.com, that's firstshareofstock.com. Uh, so uh, the, my question is, I just introduced my 13-year-old son to the stock market and opened a custodial brokerage account for him. I had him buy a share of Snap, Snapchat. Okay, good, because he uses Snapchat. Good, that's a good way to teach stocks to the kids. Um, and he was excited about the principle of ownership. However, how can I get him excited and interested? And interested, he, wait, he was excited about the principle of ownership. So how can I get him excited and interested? Well, I think, Mitchell, that it's, you know, with, with your son, it's really going to be a matter of, you know, them sort of watching you through the years. And then one day when they finally realize, you know, how much the world can suck, you know, to, when you're a slave, they're going to turn back to the things that you were teaching them all along. Um, I've seen this happen up close. I have seen where I had um, my daughter in particular, um, you know, I remember when she was younger and she had zero interest in any of the stuff I was doing. Um, she went to Columbia University and she was a track athlete. She's very smart. And she's a teacher and she had zero interest in what I was doing, but she knew what I was doing. She knew what I was all about. She, you know, I, we, I talked to her about it or whatever, but it wasn't like teachy preachy. I wasn't forcing her to do anything, whatever. And then what happened was when she got to, you know, working with other people and, you know, she started learning what it's like to work with Karen every day, you know, who's telling her what to do and getting on her nerves. Everybody's got a Karen on their job. Alicia's got Karens on her job, right? That's when they start thinking like, gosh, I got to get out of here. I want to try something different, right? And so when she's bringing that to me, that's when we start talking about this thing that maybe I mentioned eight or nine years ago that wasn't of interest to her then, but it's in, of interest to her now. So people have to, you, you have to have it ready for when they're ready. But then if you plant those seeds in the subconscious, they're going to go back to what they know when they're ready. You know, it's like the guy who grows up and his mama goes to church every Sunday and he hates it. And, uh, but, and then, so he goes out into the world and he becomes a drug addict and, you know, maybe goes to prison and then he gets older and says, I want to get my life right. Well, when he's thinking like, okay, I want to get my life right now, guess what? those people become pastors, you know, everybody, I'm sure everybody's had a, a pastor who used to be an alcoholic or addicted to crack or whatever, right? No disrespect if you're in that category, but y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Well, a lot of that's because that's what they saw when they were young and they grew up in the church. And so people tend to circle back to what they know when the situation calls for it. So I think that that's what's going to happen. They're going to circle back to the church of, of powernomics that you were holding in your household um, when life starts getting tough for them or when they start to realize that money matters, that having, you know, income matters, that financial freedom matters. They, but kids don't always know that. Kids don't always care. Um, Donna, will the weekend uh, 11 steps be offered as a class later in the Black Business School? I have a conflict Saturday. Yes. Everybody who attends will get access to, lifetime access to the recording of the entire event, right? It'll be there you can join, you can join later if you want to, uh, or you can go back and, and look at it again after it's over with. So every student that, that joins us for the Black Stock Market Weekend uh, will have lifetime access to the material forever. So if you're interested uh, and you want to get the 48% discount, uh, it's the weekend of August 7th. You can go to blackstockmarketweekend.com. That's blackstockmarketweekend.com. Let's see, uh, S uh, Salam, are you familiar with Tradera? No. Um, I, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. Am I familiar with currency trading? Yes. I've been invited to sign up and learn to trade. Will I learn currency trading in your class? Um, we do have a Forex program in the Black, in, in the Black Business School, but we're not going to talk about currency trading in the Black Stock Market program. The Black Stock Market program focuses on the stock market. So, uh, but, but we do have a Forex program. Um, let's see here. Uh, Clifton says that the discount doesn't come up. Let me see here. So, let me try it. Let me take a look. Okay, so it's coming up for me. So try it again. It's blackstockmarketweekend.com. And it should come up. It should come up. I, I don't. And if you have any trouble at all with anything at any point in the Black Business School, just email support at theblackbusinessschool.com. That's support at theblackbusinessschool.com. Chris says, I'm on the Black Business School website right now and I can't access the support team. Is there a phone number I can call? If you leave a message for um, for the support team on the site, they're going to get right back to you because they're, they're always in there. Um, but it's the weekend, so maybe they're taking time off. But also, if you email support at theblackbusinessschool.com, they tend to respond within 24 hours. 
So uh, feel free to shoot an email over there. All right, so let's see, what's the best life insurance? Um, I use term life and I buy from uh, the black insurance network.com. Uh, that's the black insurance network.com. It's a nice lady named Yolanda Spivey who runs that and uh, tell her I sent you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Echo says, is the plug stock a good investment? Um, you know what? Um, I would look at what the analysts are saying about the stock but I don't know anything about the company. So if you ask me about a specific company, I'm not gonna, I, there's thousands of companies, so I haven't studied all of them. Uh, Jake Wan, uh, put options, is it a smart move or a stupid move? It depends on what your philosophy is. If you're a bear, then it's a smart move. If you're a bull, then it's, a, it's not a smart move, right? Uh, bulls expect the market to go up, bears expect it to go down. Also put options are used for insurance to protect your portfolio. So if you wanna, so it depends on what your goals are, whether or not it's smart or stupid. That's, it's like asking, you know, is it smart? Is it smarter to eat at McDonald's or Burger King, right? Some people would say, oh, it's McDonald's because I like their food. Somebody else might say, oh, I like Burger King better. Some, some people may say neither one because, you know, it's fast food. It's all unhealthy, right? So it, what, what's smart depends on what you're trying to do and what you believe. Uh, let's see, Kirk, how do you find out about drips that are straight from a corporation? Um, dividend reinvestment plans, that's what drips are. I, on Robinhood apps, I know for sure, and on most apps, they'll let you reinvest your dividends if that's what you want. Like, that's what I do. I don't get dividend checks. I just reinvest it all. Um, is Zoom a good long-term investment? Eh, you know, specific companies I can't answer on so much. I do know Zoom has had a big price jump, and there are some people who worry that Zoom might not do so well long-term after the COVID situation is over. Uh, tech, is Robinhood a good source of platform for beginners to learn day trading? I think Robinhood can work, but if you're trying to be a serious day trader, I think there are more complex platforms out there that give you more tools to work with. Um, let's see, one, two, Dr. Watkins, what in investments, stocks, precious metals, commodities, will most likely resist the decimation of the dollar? Uh, commodities, gold and silver in particular, uh, even crypto can help. Uh, let, uh, T310, I'm back and forth on how to go about investing. Several people I follow, uh, including you, Minority Mindset, Richard Fain, and you. I don't know whether to invest in dividend paying stocks, save my cash for a down payment for a duplex, or start a business, or just continue to stack as much as I can with this current economic climate. Yeah, I think if you start a business, whatever you do, manage your risk and ask yourself what's the worst that can happen. Stocks are the easiest thing to get started in. I can show you how to invest how to start investing in stocks with $10 in 10 minutes. Now, those of you who haven't started yet, just go to firstsharestock.com. There's a training there. You'll know how to invest in the stock market in 10 minutes. Um, real estate takes a little more time because there's complex terminology you want to know, and you probably want to get a mentor for real estate. We do have a real estate program in the Black Business School uh, run by Julian Gordon, who controls about $3 million worth of property. So feel free to um, go to the blackbusinessschool.com and you can check out the, the real estate program that Julian has in the school. Um, and then third, uh, starting a business is probably the most complex and time consuming. Um, so in fact, maybe being an investor solution than actually running the business yourself. I don't recommend running a business yourself unless you have a passion for the business. Like, like for example, if I invest in a bakery, I don't have a passion for baked goods like that. You know, that's gonna, you know, uh, want me to, or get me to want to dedicate, you know, thousands of hours of my life to sit around baking cookies all day. So what I would rather do actually is invest in someone who loves baking and become, a, you know, a part owner. And that's the goal of capital accumulation is you want to build up enough money so that your money can be allocated to a situation where it works for you in a passive fashion. That's the best thing to do. Uh, what do I think about the NAACP? Uh, I don't think about them very much, to be honest with you. That's not the solution, in my opinion. I think wealth, I'm all about the uh, M-O-N-E-Y for black people. I think that if we accumulate wealth and we learn how to manage wealth, um, I think that we will be much more powerful than we'll ever be uh, by waiting for white people to be nice to us. Um, NW. Question, as a young black investor, should I get a loan to invest in real estate or should I wait until I have all the money saved for full ownership? Um, a lot of, you know, getting loans gives you leverage. Leverage is risky. So I, I'm not a big fan of taking on too much leverage, but I think loans are okay. Um, I think that if you have a great investment opportunity, a loan can be a good thing because it gives you ownership and control, which uh, can allow you to participate in capital gains. So I think a loan's okay, but uh, just think about, again, always think about the worst case scenarios when it comes to investing. What qualities are needed to be a good businessman or a good entrepreneur? 
Um, I think that uh, the capacity to learn is good because uh, you can learn and you can innovate and keep ahead of the competitors. I think that uh, a commitment to what you're doing, like a passion for what you're doing is really good. Passion drives you and gives you fuel you know, for your fire. Um, I think that uh, um, maybe being in a group with other entrepreneurs can be helpful. You know, the ability to kind of form relationships and maintain those relationships can be beneficial because when you have good relationships, it allows you to provide economic security for each other. Um, that's important. Uh, you know, there, there's a few other things there. It's, it's, it, is, it is interesting. It's a hell of a journey, um, but I, I think it's very rewarding. You know, what was funny was I remember when I quit my job and I remember how nervous I was about quitting my job. And I remember I had this on recurring fear that one day I was going to have to just, I think I was going to struggle so much that I'd have to go back begging on my knees and apologizing to the people that I used to work for, you know, and begging them to take care of me. And that was my ongoing fear. That was my biggest fear. And it never happened. Like it never, I never came close to that. You know, I, I've had bad months. I had months where I didn't have any money. I had months where, you know, like we were really struggling with we some really bad months, but never once did I ever think about giving up my freedom I just enjoy it. Like freedom is so great that once you get it, you just can't go backward. And, and a lot of people during COVID are realizing that like a lot of people are not going to go back to the office after this is over with. Um, so, you know, that's my two cents on that. Uh, and so by the way, yeah, I see. Okay. The, the stock market weekend is next week, August 7th. You can go to the black stock market Uh, you can get a 48% discount until midnight. If you're in the black stock market program, you can come for free. Now, if you're in the mini class, the mini class is not the program, right? So mini class or any other, anything other than the black stock market program itself, uh, there is a fee, but you can get 48% off until midnight. It's going to be uh, four to three days where I'm going to spend a lot of time with you and I'm going to break down an 11 step methodology that I use to add stocks to my portfolio. And then I will answer 10 trillion questions and we will just have a blast and you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be amazing. And there's a 30 day, 100% money back guarantee for anything in the black business school. And uh, we're growing, we're doing it. We're doing the damn thing. My dream when I left Syracuse was um, I said, you know, I really want black people to really value wealth. Like I really want black people to see what I've seen. Like I want, I want my community to understand what I understand. And, um, and I taught a lot of people that weren't black and I saw what they were doing. And I'll be damned if, if we didn't achieve that goal. I mean, we started doing this 15 years ago. And at that time, I had people telling me that it wasn't going to work, that there are no the black people are not interested in wealth. And, um, and that's just, we proved them wrong. A lot of people that weren't interested before became interested. And I've seen you grow. I've seen many of you start businesses. I've seen you build your portfolios. I've seen you shift your families. I've seen you break generational curses. Um, and I just want to applaud you uh, and, and just say, you know, keep going, keep going, keep going. If you keep going, you will win. If you keep going in life, you will win. I can, I, I'm just telling you, OG status right now. Uncle Boyce is talking. And I'm done answering questions. I'm getting a little bit tired. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm telling you, I'm going to go OG real quick with Uncle Boyce mode and just tell you that that is, the num that is another incredible, incredibly important factor in success. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. If you have the energy and you're relentless about it and you never stop and you remain consistent, whatever obstacle is in your way will eventually move and you will win. So keep going and keep winning. And, and also don't forget that the impact you're making in this generation is going to uh, exist across generations. That there are unborn grandchildren who are gonna look back on the great things you're doing right now that are going to, and they're gonna grow those things into empires that you can't even conceive of. I'm telling you, there are so many billion dollar companies out right now that started with nothing, where the original business owner thought they didn't have anything and that thing turned into something that was worth several billion dollars. So many of you have billionaire, multi-billionaire grandchildren and great-grandchildren that you haven't even thought about, but the seed starts with you. You are the seed, the seed must be planted, the seed must be nurtured, the seed must be grown, the seed must be fertilized, fertilize your future. Make investments, make your moves, don't be scared, go hard, you're, you're the greatest, no matter what anybody else tells you, I'm here to tell you that that destiny is meant for you. Okay, guys, so just keep going and believe in yourself. It's very important. Okay, so I'm gonna go uh, a couple times. I'll give you the URLs one more time before we go. If you want to join us next week for the Black Stock Market Weekend, that URL where you can get a 48% discount on the cost of admission uh, until midnight tonight, you can go to blackstockmarketweekend.com. That's blackstockmarketweekend.com. We get started on the weekend of August 7th. It's gonna be amazing blackstockmarketweekend.com. Now, if you want to join the Black Stock Market program, 
uh, which again, being in that program means you can get into the weekend for free. Uh, you can do a 30 day trial for a dollar at the, don't forget the T-H-E, the black stock market program.com. Somebody please type that in the black stock market program.com. Uh, if you have kids and you want your kids to join our black business school for children, you can go to black millionaires of tomorrow.com. That's black millionaires of tomorrow.com. That program, we have a program in, um, in the foundations of money. We have a program in the foundations of investing. We have a program in the foundations of the stock market. We have a program in the foundations of real estate. Uh, we have a program in the foundations of entrepreneurship for children. Uh, there's a degree they can get when they're done, a certificate that they can, uh, once you go through all the content and take all the self-study exams, you can actually get a certificate. They print that out. They put that on their wall. They get to say, I went to college when I was 12, right? That's huge for their self-esteem. That's very, very important. And it's huge for our community too. Uh, last but not least, if you haven't bought your first share of stock uh, and you don't have any, you, you're not ready to make an investment in anything yet uh, in terms of the Black Business School, that's okay. We have a space for you too. If you want to get started, you can go to firstshareofstock.com and go through that 10 minute training. I'll show you how to buy your first share of stock to get started. That's firstshareofstock.com. So we have a lot of resources for you. And like I said, there's 107,000 students in the Black Business School. We gained about 5,000 more students this month. And our goal is literally to uh, give every university, every business school, every HBCU a run for their money because I believe that we can do not, we can't just do what they do. We do what they do better. They can't do what we do. That's what it is. That's what we've created. And we're amazing in this. All of us are. So God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. It was fun talking to you. And I'm going to go and uh, do something with my voice. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.